Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to do a financial statement analysis of Tesla stock. I'm going to look at the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flows for Tesla. Not necessarily in that order. And we're going to look into what's going on inside of Tesla with their key metrics and I'm going to highlight a few important things here so let's get right into it so starting with the first thing that jumps out at me is the inventory level if we look at inventory here between 2021 here and 2022 ending the period ending December 31st inventory more than doubled from 5.7 billion to 12.8 billion uh, the company produced more as it ramped up capacity than it sold and now it's got this inventory on hand and you can start to understand all of the headlines that have been coming out from Tesla saying that it's reducing prices in China and reducing prices in North America on its cars. It tried to downplay the fact that uh, it's got excess inventory and it's not selling as much as it's producing by saying that oh we're only doing this because we wanted to qualify for the tax credits and that's why we're doing it and it's trying to take attention away from the fact that inventory is building up right you can't um, you can't dispute the facts here uh, more than doubling to 12.8 billion from 5.7 billion overall um, the company has $16.2 billion in cash on hand and $5.9 billion in short-term investments. Liquidity is no longer a problem for Tesla. For several years, it had difficulty raising enough cash to invest in the kinds of capacity expansions that it needed to deliver the customer demand. But now, after several rounds of billions of dollars of stock sales after the stock soared and it ramped up capacity enough to reach cash flow positive, it's sustainably running on sound footing and it's got enough cash on hand to self be self-sustaining. So that's good news for Tesla stock investors. Very little long-term debt for the company. Uh, to worry about it's got these other long-term liabilities of 5.3 billion overall total liabilities of 36 billion are uh, f less than its total current assets of 41 billion so uh, the balance sheet is in much better position today in uh, as of December 31st 2022 than it was let's say for example on December 31st 2019 so the company's made tremendous progress on that front the next uh, financial statement I will go over is the uh, income statement and what you notice first is the increase in total revenues a uh, nice jump from 31.5 billion in 2020 all the way up to 81.46 billion in 2022 and the bulk of that coming from automotive sales car sales uh, growing from 24 billion to 44 to 67 billion the rest of its businesses are small in relation to its uh, car sales with services coming in at 6 billion um, and the next highest being energy generation and storage at 3.9 billion but that's good that the car segment is the majority of its sales because that's the best uh, segment in terms of profitability if you look at cost of revenue and you compare each of the segments, look at automotive. Cost of revenues in 2022 of 49 billion on sales of 67 billion. So healthy and robust profitability there. But look at all the other segments. Automotive leasing, uh, cost of revenue 15, uh, 1.5 billion on 2.5 billion in leasing. That's also solid, but again, that's car sales. Uh, instead of sales, it's leasing. But you look at energy generation and storage, Costs of 3.6 billion, revenue of 3.9 billion, so barely a margin there, 10%. And then cost of revenues for services, 5.9 billion in costs, 6.1 billion in revenue. So uh, even less than 10%, less than 5% in margin here in those other segments. So investors would like to see the growth come from the automotive segment because that's the segment delivering the profitability at this point maybe in the future that changes but for now this is the profitable segment 
And uh, I will highlight this impressive income from operations growth from 1.9 billion to 6.5 billion to 13.6 billion. Very nice growth here, exponentially increasing its operating income. Uh, Tesla, I've always said, has done an excellent job uh, demonstrating economies and scale. As it has ramped up production, its profitability has expanded. Uh, although 2023 is going to be a challenge to that because its cost of goods sold are rising because of inflation. Competition is forcing it to drop prices on its cars and sales could decrease because co consumer spending could be pinched as we face a potential recession. So 2023 could be when this exponential growth in profitability takes a backward step or flat lines for Tesla. So that's something I'm keeping an eye out for. Finally, I will take a look at Tesla's cash flow from operations. And the key metric I like to look at here is cash provided by operating activities. And again, Tesla showing nice growth from 5.9 billion to 11.5 to 14.7 billion. As it has ramped up production, sales have increased, profits have increased, cash flow has increased. The trifecta for Tesla, so solid growth here in that regard. And then, uh, interestingly, the purchases of digital assets, which was a major distraction in my opinion, uh, Tesla spent $1.5 billion buying cryptocurrencies in 2021. It sold $936 million worth in uh in 2022, and it's taking losses on those sales, 140 million losses, 140 million in losses from uh, these investments in cryptocurrencies, and there's more losses to come if prices don't rebound. And that just um, uh, highlights uh, poor, in my opinion, poor fiscal management here from Tesla's management. Although I do agree that it brought the company a lot of publicity and attention as Elon Musk uh, publicly stated that he's you know investing in cryptocurrency and all the attention it got him and maybe that helped sales increase uh, to offset you know this 140 million dollar loss. Mm, I guess you can argue that but again I, I don't like when uh, an investment, uh, a company that I'm investing in, takes the cash balance and invests in something as risky as cryptocurrency. I prefer the company to just hold it in uh, certificates of deposits or something safe like that, or just return the cash to shareholders. If you've got more cash than you know what to do with, then return it to shareholders, do a stock buyback. Don't invest in cryptocurrencies. Uh, in any case, that's just my opinion. Uh, you guys might like that the company invested in cryptocurrency and that's your preference um, and that's your choosing. I, I do not prefer that and I, I, I would uh, very much prefer the company uh, be more prudent with its cash balances. All right, but in any case, that's all I've got for this video. I really appreciate your viewership. Thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you next time. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.